Hello, my day trading friends. This is a uh, chart review for November 2nd on the ES uh, 2000 tick. I've pre-marked some trades on this chart here, and then we're going to go back and look at it in um, in book map to see what the actual uh, trading patterns were of people in real time. Uh, so not just you know not just chart patterns, but see where buying and selling was actually taking place. And uh, so we're going to start around the open. I don't did mark anything before then. So around 8:35, 8:36, uh, you've got this potential long here, and that's just because you came down. You know, you made this little level here. You know, it's going to be in that area or this area that you expect it to reverse if it's going to reverse. And it bounced up there and gave you a good looking entry bar. So. That's a good potential scalp there. Um, and then you come back and start falling. And this isn't uh, any kind of, well, I guess you could call that a second entry short, couldn't you? So this is first entry, second entry short. Uh, you come down here. And again, you don't have any good looking bars down here to tell you to go long, but you've made this area up here on the horizontal, right? So you're looking, you know, at the top here or right here, it's never exact. For maybe a good sign, you get a decent entry bar there. So that's a good place to go. Come back here. This one's a little more uh, aggressive, but you're off the EMA. Uh, you've kind of piled up here, you know, pushed above this little mini range and then failed. So I think that that's a potential good place to go short. I'm really interested to see how that one looks in book map. And then you really crash. We get here at about 9.58, 10 o'clock. Again, you've made a level here. Gives you a decent bounce off that level. So that's a good potential scalp long. And then it kind of gets junky from there. I don't know if I'm going to go this far. But I'm definitely not going to go past 11 o'clock when I've marked this final trade. Again, that's this line right here that you're seeing. This is where the day opened. And it's been crashing back to the open all day long. Um, and then you see it bounces up at the open and then bounces off the open again. And then it gets below the open and starts, you know, bouncing off it in the other direction. And that's why I marked this one down is if you're going at the horizontal right here and thinking of this kind of as a mini range. They're not not even a mini range. You've got a decent range at that point. It's gone about 30 minutes long. Uh, that's a good place to, to try to get some points. So let's go back and look at book map and see what actually happens. We'll try to make this speed up as fast as possible. And again, if you haven't seen book map before, this is a visual of where people are in the order book uh, as it happens. And so this is this right here gives you what volume is sitting where this gives you the visual of that volume so darker bars like this is higher volume uh, when it starts going blank that's lower volume and then so you know a little more a little more a little more a little more and then when it starts getting this real dark orange and that's volume relative to the rest of the volume in the book right here we've got the trade counter this counts the actual amount of trades that happen at that price level and then over here, I'm just tracking big lot sizes. So anybody that trades over a 50 lot gets tracked over here. So let's see if we can uh, get anything going. There's also going to be these uh, volume pie charts that pop up. And you'll be able to see um, that it's giving you a pie chart of if there were more buyers or sellers at a particular time. That's set to a minimum volume of 500. So if less than 500 people trade at a particular time at a particular price, then it's not going to show up. That just cuts out some noise for me. Otherwise, there's bubbles all over the place. But you'll start seeing those pop up once the open happens. So let's give this a little, uh, little speed so we can get to the first trade. And we'll see if it gives us any kind of information in the book about what happened at that trade and maybe why it was a good trade. So we're about to hit the open. You'll start seeing a lot of volume bubbles pop up after the open. 
hits. There you go. Because of course, there's always more traders at the open. And it's going back and forth. You know, this volume bubble was mostly sellers. The one right after it was mostly buyers. wasn't a whole lot of consistent volume right at the open kind of petered out real quick price is still moving around though All right, we're getting towards that first trade now. So if you see the trade counter here, this is kind of builds up like a sort of like a volume profile for you. So you can see where, you know, people were kind of interested in taking action. Right now it's pretty consistent all over the place. There's no like anomalies or anything you can base your trading on. It's kind of why we're hung up in this little range. So you expect maybe that it's going to bounce off up here. You've created this little section up here at the top of this potential kind of short range. So it's not surprising that it's coming down. There's not a good signal bar. It didn't really give you a lot of hints till down here. So it's not a bad place to skip. All right. So now what we've got, and this is where the book can help you. You came down into what's clearly a high volume area over here on the chart. That makes sense. You know, you've bounced here before, you created a little bit of noise here, and then you bounced in that same area, and then you come down and you bounce up again. And it confirms it on the chart. You've got a high volume section right here. So you know there's a high volume of, of buyers there, and it just depends on if they're going to affect the price or not. You know, sometimes it can eat through those buyers. Sometimes there's enough of them to, to reject it. And, you know, you had action there. You could tell that action took place. And then if you're looking at your uh, bar chart, it gives you a nice signal bar to go along. And maybe you wanted to get out around 2751 for the potential because it could bounce down there because you're you know that you've built up kind of a range here. So that'd be at least a good first place to target for an exit. All right, let's speed it up to get to the next entry area. It's gonna happen around 8.55ish, a little bit after. So let's see if it gives us any signal around there. That we could have followed. Here's an interesting spot. So you know it starts collapsing up here too because we've cheated and seen the end of the day. So we know, you know, up here it starts kind of piling down. It's around kind of the 840 mark. Well, 
maybe that would have been a good time to think about getting short too. As you can see, you've got high volume of sellers here. Came through at eight through one of them, but it didn't get through the second one. And then we came through, we eat through the second one, but this is all buyers. And when you get all buyers like that, a lot of times that means they've exhausted out. There was like no sellers to, to play with. And a lot of times that's a good signal to start going back down. Of course, you gotta have the proper price action. Obviously, a lot of buyers can mean that it's gonna fire up, and you'll see this over and over again. You get a big kind of disproportionate amount where there's just no sellers or vice versa if there's no buyers at all. And that's at the top of, you know, looks like it could be at the top of a, a uh, trend. A lot of times that means that trend is exhausted out and it's done and it's about ready to at least pull back, you know, if not reverse. So we get what we think could be a possible exhaust down, so we're not looking to buy up here. You know, we get sellers here, we get sellers here. So it's kind of adding up that maybe we're looking at a reversal. Another thing to look at too is we're in a high volume area. So a lot of people have traded up here. And if you can break through that to one side or the other, that you might get a run. A lot of times once you break out of these high volume areas, that's you get a run into it build until it builds up another high volume area. So let's slow it down. We're getting about to where this happens. So we ran out of that high volume area. You think, man, maybe I could have got short up there. Uh, you had some signals that maybe it was going to happen backed up by a couple big sellers. And it came off high volume areas. So there's a lot of signs there that you might, you know, you definitely aren't at least going long. So you're not gonna get confused by a potential, you know, like maybe that's a first entry, maybe that's a second entry long off the EMA. There was no chance of getting confused by that if you're watching this over here. So this is about where the trade is that I marked going short. Let's see if it gives us any kind of signal for it or not. Gives you a signal bar. There's a seller that piles in. So if you haven't gone short yet on that bar, if you didn't count like count that as a first entry short and a second entry short, you know, if you're wondering if you missed this trade or not, you had this seller that kind of came in right at the end of that sort of signal bar. And so that, you know, doesn't mean you're going to be right, but uh, it definitely gives you a little more confidence to take that short. Plus, you don't see the high volume until you get down to about 27.46, which makes sense because that's at a, the bottom of where this low is here. It's in that area at least. So you're thinking maybe you can at least get down to there. That's a good place to put your first target so you don't just waste four ticks. You can go down there and target that pending any kind of signal otherwise. So that wasn't the you know, the biggest signal, but in conjunction with the signal bar over here, I think it is a good sign to go short. So we get this big, huge seller here. Um, that's a warning sign that we could have a pullback or a reversal. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. But if you haven't gone short yet, I probably wouldn't go short here. You've got high volume of buyers. You've got that. You're going to need another signal if you're going to think this is going to reverse. But it's a warning sign to say, hey, maybe, maybe I'm too late on this trend. I don't want to jump in unless I get something else to work with. That right there 
could be your something else to work with. We came back, we ate up those buyers. That's if your hypothesis is that you're still going down. Let's see. And of course, we know what happened at the end of this day, so we know it ends up piling through here. Ooh. If you still needed some more convincing sell, 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 like big sell, big sell, big sell. So you're feeling more and more good about that if you if you went short. All right, let's go look at the chart. Now, we range out here, and then we get about 9.17. Uh, let's see how confusing the range ends up being. Slow this down, pressing too much time. Nine oh four ish is when that starts. So it starts about here. Okay. It makes a bit of sense. Um, you've got a real solid block here. I mean, look at the difference. You had one seller here, or one solid block of buyers here, and another down here. Um, and that's definitely potential. You know, you got to worry about the price action that the buyers could win. But down here, you know, one, two, three, four, almost five solid blocks, like all lined up together. You know, it's a pretty good sign that you probably shouldn't sell here unless it's just, you just get an overwhelming signal to do so. See if we can get tricked in here anywhere. Where are we? We're here. 902. And the price action was pretty good here as well. Doesn't look like very tricky stuff. So let's get through some of this. Come right back down into that solid block of buyers. Comes right back up. To here, and you're looking, I mean, if you're still thinking that this is a it's been pretty down day so far. You haven't made it down to, this is where I'd be targeting, 27.31. Haven't made it down there. Haven't made it to the open at 27.24. You got room to run. You're up at this vertical here. So if your hypothesis is that this hasn't reversed, that you're still going down. You got a couple sellers to support it at that resistance you know it doesn't matter if there's sellers there on the middle of no man's land then you get sell 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 so that's definitely a good place to short at least for the scalp you might have to worry about these blocks right they're not gone yet but this is a good signal you know sell 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 A big sell right after these buyers have pushed up and then sold right away. You know, it's kind of like trapping them right there, even though you don't see it on the chart.
so because of this area with all these sellers that popped in here and this is not a place that i would have sold at um it's a place that i'd be holding on to being very cautious that if it pops up back up into this area that i'm probably going to just get out or break even or whatever i need to do because those buyers could win out But as it happens, it pushes on through them. So let's go nine. So, so pretty soon here, we're going to get another signal. Might have missed out on that one. Let's see. That's about to show up. You know, I didn't see a whole lot there. Um, didn't see a whole lot in the book to support me on that one. Of course, it would have worked out great, but I don't know if I would have taken that if I was watching this real time. Hopefully, I just would have been holding. All right, so that's our first trade that didn't look as golden as before. Around 9.30, we get another pop down. Around 9.57, 9.30, 9 9.36, 9.57. Let's see if we get anything on those. Because you've watched this sucker just die just collapse you got this big group of buyers i mean we've eaten through that big group we've eaten through that big group so odds are we might still eat through that big group. we haven't made it down here yet to 27 30 75 that's my first area of concern 27 24 is my next area of concern got to be looking horizontal on the chart trend lines is not enough you got to look horizontal get that sell you know if you're bold at this point and you think hey we've you know these buyers have not held up all day <clears throat> then the fact that we just smashed them again right there maybe that's a place to go short you know if you get burned you get burned you may already made hopefully you were in and made some points and you know getting burned once or twice is not a big deal you didn't see a bunch of buyers pop in so if you did take that risk that we're gonna eat through those buyers like we have before you're not concerned about it yet You know, seller, seller, major seller, seller. Like, you've at least scalped out by now. And there was never a buyer to concern you with. Like, these guys just never showed up. They were in the book. They just never showed up. Any more sellers? Yeah. So, at the very least, if you did take that trade, uh, you weren't, uh, you were never scared out of it that just there was no reason to ever be scared out of it next one is 9 36 coming up soon we'll see if we have that kind of same situation where it just never worries you
you know, we pop back up into this kind of area of higher trading. A lot of times you'll see that that's kind of where, you know, people come back in. But I didn't see a lot of action there. Still no buyers. Still no buyers. I didn't see any huge like sell signal up through there, but if you're looking at the price action on the chart, you know, still not a buyer around to, to worry you about. So uh, that definitely could have been a, a sell for somebody for sure. All right, let's do one more. Then we'll get out of here. Let's see if there gives us any signal on this pop up around 939 and then that 957 trade. So on the vertical, we're down or horizontal, we're down to the opening. It's the last place of the day that you've got a real good uh, spot to be concerned about. Get down in here. See if this gives us any kind of warning signs that this trend is over. Mm, this one takes a little bit, so let's. Well, that's your first big buyer that you've had. You had a little one here. And then you got another big buyer. I mean, you're not trying to go long here, at least I hope you're not. If anything, you're still looking for shorts. And it might be tempting to take one here. You've got some sellers lined up. You're at the EMA. Let's see what happens right here. You get any sellers popping in? Not seeing anything. Oh, there you go. So you might be tempted <clears throat> to try to ride this back down again. You get some sellers that pop back in around the EMA. chart looks ugly hopefully that saved you from getting burned I'm just fighting back and forth now Yeah, <clears throat> I don't think I'd have the balls to go short here. There's too many buyers. You can see over here, I don't follow this that much, but all the big boys are, you know, there's a big long line of big boys buying. Now it falls down anyway for a second, and then it pushes right back up. So yeah, you would have got burned there if you if you didn't pay attention to all this, if you thought that that was the, if that was the signal to go down. Is that it? That's it for the day. So, you know, thinking back on it, did I mark that as a long? No, I didn't mark any long in there. Okay. No, I did. 9.57. I probably take that back. That's really, really risky. <clears throat> I don't I don't think that was a good long, really. I mean, you've got some things working for you. So let's pause this here. We don't need this going anymore. So when you got into the muck here, you were warned about it by buyers way back here. 
you said, hey, we haven't seen buyers for a long time. And then boom, boom, boom. You get some buyers that come in. You can tell on the chart that it's pushed up kind of hard. And on a down day like this, there's no way you're looking for a short. But all these buyers just keep kind of popping up in your way. So I don't know how you could really take a short there. You've got this. So if you're looking at a horizontal, look over here on the chart, on the price chart. From 944 to 949, it goes straight across. Then it pops up a little bit, comes back down. 957, then pops up. So that's why I marked that as a long. But on a down day like this, I don't know. I mean, you had all these buyers lined up. Boom, 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 boom. You saw all these big boys here. And then it comes in and then it starts signaling buyers here. So you would have got away with it. And uh, and it's definitely in an area zone that you're looking for a potential. And it's backed up over here. But it's ballsy. It's ballsy on a day like this. So that's, that's a aggressive. We'll mark that as an aggressive trade. But that's it. That's the day. That's that's what happened in the book. If you're confused by where you got burned, um, this book can really help you. Or if why you missed a trade, this book can really help you. It's called Book Map. It's been helping me a lot. Um, that's it. <laughs>